This really? conference will now be recorded. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to episode 15 of the Hooked Animal Humane Society's Saturday Seminar Series. For 52 years, the Hooked Animal Humane Society has advocated for the humane treatment of hooked animals through education, legislation, investigation, and if necessary, legal intervention. Haas also provides physical rehabilitation to animals that have endured severe neglect and abuse and adopts them out to new homes. Each month, we are lucky to have veterinarians and subject matter experts educate us on topics near and dear to our hearts as horse owners and lovers. Today, we are talking about equine allergies. Dr. Erica Latcher graduated from the University of Florida's College of Veterinary Medicine and is the owner of Spring Hill Equine Veterinary Clinic in Newberry, Florida. In addition to practicing veterinary medicine, she is also an author, blogger, and podcaster with the mission of making the world a better place for horses. Seven years ago, Dr. Latcher saw a need for a client-facing educational podcast about vet medicine and started straight from the horse doctor's mouth, which helps educate horse owners worldwide. She enjoys competing in show jumping with her horses and spending time outdoors with her husband. Welcome, Dr. Latcher. We will turn the controls over to you. All right. Okay, here we go. Come on. <laughs> yeah, I know it's being super slow this morning. There we go. All right. Okay. And we are going to go ahead and hide all the us so we get to just see your presentation is that showing the presentation to you guys not little... yet okay it's been a no. little weird on my end it's definitely not letting me share my screen hold on There we go, maybe. There we go. Getting closer. Come on. There, okay. <laughs> Clearly we should have walked this and this around for 10 minutes or so before we started. Warmed warmed it up just like our horses. There we go. I was gonna say that that looks better. Does that look better to you guys? It does. Okay, give me one second to move around here for a second. Okay, can you guys see that? Should say signs you might have an itchy horse. I can see it just fine. Okay, perfect. So once I go here, I lose you guys. So, um, okay, so I'm Dr. Latcher. I am with Spring Hill Equine and the podcast straight from the horse doctor's mouth. I love questions, so feel free to unmute yourselves during the talk if you'd like and put them in here. I, the way this is working, I can't quite see the chat, but I will catch chat ones at the end. Uh, whatever you want to do, you can stop me and ask any question you want. There are no stupid questions when it comes to horses. So if you've ever walked out to the barn and you've seen a fence that looks like this, you might have an itchy horse. You will also probably uh, bring in some swear words to say, why on earth has my horse done this to me? And I have to go fix fence, which is the least favorite thing of any horse owner ever. So today let's talk about unhappy horse hides and how to make them happy. 
there are several ways that our horses show us that they have allergies. These are some big ones. We'll go out and see that our horse has wheels. That's our technical name for lumps and bumps that are caused by itching. Uh, we'll see these on maybe the entire horse. We'll see them on a large spot. We'll see them very focal. These tend to, but not always, be an indication of a contact allergy. So the horse has come into contact with something and the skin is super unhappy about it. And that's where they're demonstrating it. We might also just see a little bit of a serous nasal discharge or a serous ocular discharge. This may be the only indication we have from the horse that they are allergic to something in the environment. And just like us when we're allergy, allergy, I think I just made that word up, but anyways, they, they just get that runniness, you know, when like you just feel like you're leaking everywhere and you can't make it stop. The next is dandruff. I can't tell you how many times I have an owner call me and they say, my horse has dry flaky skin. Well, I live in Florida and for most of the hum year, the humidity is approximately 110%. Very, very rarely <laughs> do we have dry flaky skin in Florida. Now take us out of here and put us someplace with no humidity and we definitely experience dry flaky skin. But in Florida itself, very uncommon. You may see nothing more than a few flakes in the mane, like the horse on the left. That is an indication that there is some itching going on. You may see like the horse wearing the bridle, that there are patches of the mane missing. You may see like the horse on the, the right there, the tail, you've got some itching at the tail head. You may see that to this extreme. This is a very characteristic look for an insect hypersensitivity, that they're allergic to gnats. Uh, but if you see this, the number one thing I get called for on this is my horse has mange. And I can almost guarantee your horse doesn't have mange, but your horse is allergic to gnats. So this is a chronic, chronic, chronic itchy horse that also likely has a secondary skin infection going on at least here and almost definitely in all of these red nasty places. So not only are we gonna have to manage the allergies on this horse, but we're gonna have to deal with secondary skin infections as well. Less commonly, we may have some changes to the manure or we may have a chronic, usually low level colicky horse. We may see some soft cow pie manure as we like to call it, as opposed to the normal fecal balls. We may just see excess fecal water is our fancy term for when they have a normal pile of manure, but there's a lot of water with it. Those horses you can often spot from a mile away because they look like this pony here and their hind legs are just covered in manure. So you can see any variety of these things. The most common version I see is that we've got um, the cow pie manure. So let's talk about how do we decide what we have going on. There's many, many steps we can go through, but one is to pull out my inspector gadget hat. And a lot of it is going to involve talking with you. If your horse is commonly getting the wheels or hives, we're gonna talk about, we're gonna go in a really deep dive about what happens in your horse's life on a day-to-day -day basis. Like, did you get a new batch of hay? Did you get new shavings? Like, did you get the same brand of shavings, but you just went to the store and got new ones? Like we are going to talk exhaustively about your horse. And one of the things that we're almost undoubtedly going to do as well is you're going to get a calendar and you're going to mark on that calendar when your horse has hives and how bad they are. I always like to tell that the first cell phone I got that had a camera on it, I was like, why on earth would I want a camera on my phone? Well, it turns out taking pictures of skin lesions, which is then date stamped by your phone is a super great use of phones. So, I may have you take pictures and write the date on the calendar so that we can correlate them together to see, do we have a small amount of hives? Do we have a large amount? Um, you know, what has happened in your horse's life? But a lot of what we do is investigating and using our hands and our eyes. Next, we may do a skin scrape and a skin scrape. We're going to take an, an area of the skin that is affected and we're gonna look at that skin scrape under a microscope and we're gonna see, what do we see? 
This that you see here, these um these kind of stringy bits are uh, those are fungi. So less common in horses, but this is probably a horse that has ringworm or some other kind of fungal skin disease. We're going to treat that very differently than if we do this skin scrape and we see that we have bacteria going on here. We're going to treat it way differently than if we do this skin scrape. It's winter and it's up north and your horse is hanging out in an enclosed barn and we see mites crawling around. Very rare for me to see in Florida, much more common in colder climates where horses will be stabled for a prolonged period of times. And if your horse has feathers like gypsies, any of the draft breeds, way, way more common. So all of these are really important to do to get to the bottom of the story. We may do blood tests. There are some diseases of organs, in particular the liver, that can demonstrate skin allergy type signs. So by doing blood testing, we can make sure that all of the normal systems of the horse are operating and we aren't getting something telling us that internally we've got something weird going on. What we are not going to do is a blood allergy test. We're going to talk about that in one second. This is what's called a fungal culture. So if we see those fungal rods on the microscope, then we may take some hair and put it into a fungal culture. We may do bacterial cultures as well, see what we grow so that we can type out what species of fungus we're dealing with, or we can type out what bacteria, and we can know which antibiotics to use appropriately. We're gonna check under the tail. This is a pinworm. Um, you can tell there is, first there is a tiny white worm. I hope no one's eating during this. My favorite thing to do is put poop and, you know, generally disgusting vet pictures up during dinner time. Uh, but this is a pinworm. They are relatively easy to spot, typically in the morning and evening. Lift up your horse's tail if you're suspicious you have them. You may see the worm as we see here, right in the center. But more commonly, what we see is this off-white goo that they have deposited here. And that is the eggs from the pinworm. And that is what's itchy. So if I see a horse with an itchy tail, I may have an owner check for a few days in a row to see, do we see that? And if we do, that's a super easy fix that I promise we'll get into here. But that's very different from a horse who's allergic to gnats. And finally, if we've done a lot of things, this is typically my last step, but if we've done a lot of things, we've tried to manage a lot of things in the horse's life, then we may very well do an intradermal skin test. What this involves is taking a very small amount of allergens. So, you know, this, this section here may be wheat, corn, soy, um, then we'll probably have some dust, we'll have some different types of hays, we'll have pollen, tree pollens, Grasses are a big one, so we do grasses and uh, weeds we'll definitely test for. So we'll put a little bit of each of those under the neck, and then we're looking to see how the horse responds. So for example, on this one, you can see that these are pretty big right here, especially if you compare it to like there's one right there, and it's not very exciting. As a result of that, we know that this horse is allergic, pretty allergic to these, whatever this one is here, not so much. From that, we're going to proceed with, with therapy. So we'll get there. Hold on. But the reason we recommend intradermal skin testing as opposed to the blood draw skin allergy testing is that when we draw blood, all we are showing is that the body has made an antibody to something a horse has been exposed to. So they will be exposed to a lot of things in their life. For example, think about all the things that you have eaten in your lifetime. You may very well have antibodies to every one of those things, but it doesn't mean that you have an allergy to it. Versus if I do the test in the skin like this, we only get a reaction from the cells in the skin that are responsible for allergy. So we only get a mast cell reaction. And so we get a truer test of what this horse is actually allergic to so that we can move forward. And we're going to move forward to treatment. Typically where I start is topicals uh, that will calm the skin, 
We can take the areas where we're having a reaction and we can say, hey, can we get you to just bring it down a notch? One of the big advantages we have in horses is that we can use topical steroids pretty aggressively and not have them absorbed across the skin. Horses do a horrible job absorbing steroids. In humans, dogs, cats, we do a great job absorbing steroids from our skin. So we have to be careful about what we put into onto the skin to make sure that we aren't overwhelming the system and getting some side effects. So I am not necessarily a huge product component, but you're going to see me talk about the kinetic products here because I'm a huge believer in their product line. I live in the land of allergies and we are very successful with their product line. So the big difference between these and some of similar products that are made for dogs and cats is concentration. So in the IR shampoo, for example, there is hydrocortisone, which is a steroid. So that's going to get the skin to stop reacting quite so strongly to the allergens that it's being exposed to. And there is uh, an ingredient called promoxine, which you've ever gotten a sunburn and you've gotten you gone and get one of the gotten one of those after sun kind of sprays that make it not hurt so bad. That's promoxine. So what we're doing with that is breaking the itch cycle because sometimes that's the hardest part. We've got to get the nerves to calm down, relax, go to their zen happy place and stop being quite so itchy. So we will use this as a combination of the spray or the shampoo to go ahead and get that skin to, to calm down for us and take a deep breath. Uh, the steroid in it will also help us have a better long-term effect by getting the immune cells that are in the skin to, to tamp it down a bit, not have quite such a reaction. We will also, by bathing, remove any of the skin irritants that this horse is reacting to. So we want to get anything topical off and, and get it gone. Very rarely do I use harsh shampoos. The only time I do that in this area, we have um, stinging nettle. And anecdotally, I will say shampoos like Dawn seem to decrease the length of time horses respond. But in general, I don't want to go to something like a Dawn or people like to use like betadine shampoos. I actually don't want to do that because then I'm stripping the skin of the natural oils. I want to use something like a Kinetic or Equishield product that does what I want to the skin while also improving the oil barrier. Maybe as a, an acute, oh my gosh, let's get this under control treatment and potentially as a chronic kind of day-to-day, -day, we'll use a steroid like dexamethasone either by mouth or in the vein or the muscle as a shot, depending on the horse and how bad they are. If I walk out to that horse and they're covered in hives from nose to tail, I'm probably going to give them a shot of dexamethasone and see if we can get things to calm down. If I'm dealing with that horse who has allergies all the time, in particular the, the bug allergies, then it may very well be that we're going to work on putting them on a very low level of steroids systemically to complement our steroid that we're putting on topically so that we can get a better effect overall. The big problem in with steroids, if we give them orally or you know into the horse IV or IM, is we can get long-term side effects. So we have to be very careful with the amount we use. This can take me down a rabbit hole of making sure your horse isn't overweight as well. Being overweight very much limits our ability to use steroids. So if you do nothing else, keep your horse at a body condition score of five or six and keep your vet happy. Dr. Latcher, we did have a Diana had a question. Yeah. All right. Diana, go ahead and unmute yourself. Diana, are you able to join us or perhaps type it in the chat and we'll come back to it? Okay, we'll keep going. All right. <laughs> the next, you know, so let's say we've tried a lot of those. We were managing the, the environment. We're using the kinetic products on the skin. We're doing baths and we just have a horse who is continually being super reactive, in particular to environmental allergens. 
and we've done that intradermal testing to see what they're allergic to, we're going to make a, a vaccine basically to those items. So for example, this horse who was mine, because if you're a veterinarian, your horse has to have something wrong with them. Uh, she was allergic to, in particular in our area, we have a weed called sorrel that she was allergic to. Uh, she was also allergic to Bahia grass pollen, which is the number one pollen we have here for almost the entire year. So she started on a vaccine for those two things. You start with low dose, high volume, and you gradually increase the amount of the allergen you're exposing the body to, trying to get the immune system to realize this is a friend, not a foe, but it is a very long training process. So starting on allergy shots, it's important to understand that you're looking at probably a year to a year and a half of commitment to it before you can decide it is or isn't working. And sometimes it doesn't work. For example, on this horse, it did not work. I did commit to it for two full years and we had no change. So unfortunately you have to do that. And I will say that in the horses that I've done in the practice, mine and only one other have been a failure. Everyone else's horses has responded, but not mine. Uh, and for those horses who respond, we don't fully get rid of the allergy typically, but we get it to a very easily manageable level. Where this doesn't work is insects, because that would be amazing if we could give them a gnat allergy vaccine, but it doesn't exist at the moment. Uh, so we can use this though for environmental and many food allergies. So that is a great option for those horses. Other options you can do very readily is Zyrtec. It's over the counter. It's incredibly cheap. Uh, Amazon auto delivers it to my house on a regular basis. <laughs> um, but this is a great option to reduce that allergy threshold. Uh, it is, if you are showing, you have to check with your horse show rules. Um, it is typically considered one that they can't show on, but I believe everybody now is just a 24 hour withdrawal so that you can give it the day before you show, but not the day of. Uh, and that is because theoretically it has a mild sedative effect. I don't know anyone that's experienced that, but if your horse has allergies that are, you know, seem like with a little bit of help, you could probably control them. Zyrtec may be a great way to go. Uh, and that is a great place to have a conversation with your veterinarian, who I always say you should have a great relationship with. We can talk about that at the end, but Zyrtec can be a really good choice to take some of these guys and, and just back them off the ledge a little bit. The other supplement that I have had, and if you, anybody begins to listen to the, the podcast, you will learn that I am very, very anti-supplement. I think you should feed your horse good hay, good concentrate, and no supplements, <laughs> except <laughs> Equishield's SA powder. Again, this is a kinetic product. Uh, it has very good science behind it, and it also has very good um, anecdotal evidence. So put the two together, and that's a big deal. I won't take just anecdotal. So just because my neighbor says it works well, doesn't work for me. I need the science behind it as well. And this one does have good quality science behind it on what's in it. We have seen it help as well. And for many horses for us, we can manage them with a combination of the SA powder and Zyrtec and not have to do any of the, the higher level drugs like the vaccines or the systemic steroids. We can get them pretty good on just this. Uh, it is a, a flaxseed based powder. And again, we're going to talk about some of that in a second here, but it's a flaxseed based powder. It also contains MSM and uh, a, an herb sort of type. It's a plant derived product called quercetin. And I have definitely seen it take some of my um, asthma and skin allergy horses and bring them back from that edge. And everything we do with allergy horses is trying to get them back from the proverbial cliff. One good thing about allergies is that they are cumulative. So if my horse is allergic to shavings, that's going to add a bit. If they're allergic to their hay, that's going to add a bit. If they're allergic to pollen, that's going to add a bit. And every bit of this is getting them closer to a cliff edge that they're going to fall off and get itchy. So anything I can do to just get them back from that cliff edge, we don't have to be far from it for them to not be itchy but if I can just get them back a little bit. So that's where a lot of these therapies in horses are very cumulative and stacked. We use a lot of them and very rarely just one. 
but SA powder Dr. has been an excellent. Dr. Latcher, yep. we had just a quick question. Yep. So uh, for a 750 to 800 pound pony, what would the dosing be for Zer the Zyrtec product? She's been on hydroxyzine. Um, and I don't know, Krista, feel free to unmute yourself and, and share some of what's going on with her. But if, if here's the a, hydroxyzine Here's the cool thing about cetirizine and hydroxyzine. They are sort of the same drug. So hydroxyzine is the parent drug. Cetirizine is what happens to hydroxyzine when you take it. So you take it, it goes to your liver, it, you take the hydroxyzine, your liver turns it into cetirizine, and that's what actually does the job. So the cetirizine turns out to be a lot cheaper to make than the hydroxyzine. So if your horse that's has been responding- thinking. <laughs> I'm like, I feel like Zyrtec would be easier to get and cheaper. Yep. And it's over the counter. Yep. And if your horse is responding to hydroxyzine, there's a good chance that they will also respond to cetirizine. And the dose is about one per hundred pounds. Okay. So same as the hydroxyzine. Yep. And then with the echo shield, I also asked another question after that. With the SA powder, I love the kinetic vet. I use it on her all the time. Um, she gets the, um, the IR one for um, cleaning her um, udders and stuff like that. She's just an itchy girl. But would that also work? She's got mainly her allergies go to her eyes. She's a little POA pony and it's red, bloodshot, itchy, runny, goopy, allergy eyes. Um, we've not done any testing. The vets haven't suggested anything as of yet because the hydroxyzine has been taking care of it. But if there's anything else I can help her with other than the fly mask and the hydroxyzine and stuff, um, I'm open to, to doing. I have found that SA powder works very well in those horses. Okay. Um, typically I find that my runny nose and eyes horses are allergic to a pollen in the environment yeah. and you, you're not going to get rid of it. <laughs> right. So the, but the SA powder really, 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 like I said, I'm, I'm a huge skeptic and I have found that the SA powder consistently works better than I thought it would. Perfect. So. Awesome. Thank you so very much. You're welcome. I, and the, the thing about any of these types of supplements or anything you're going to add, and we're going to talk about another one here, but anything like that, that you do on an allergy horse, you have to be patient. You need to give it a full 30 days to kick in and create the right environment. And then I try to give it another full 30 days to get the environment to appropriately respond. So it's not like any of this is magic and it rapidly, it just solves everything. So allergies never work that way. I wish they did, but they just don't. So we're gonna talk about a couple, oh, I put Zyrtec on here twice, look at that. Um, but the SA powders are fantastic. For the bug allergy horses, what we really, really, really like is the IBH spray and salve. This works fantastic for the ear horses. I will also tell you as someone who's out working on the farm a lot in a very gnat ridden area, it very often goes in my ears to keep the gnats away. Um, but this product has a steroid in it as well as citronella. And so it keeps the gnats away, calms the skin down, does all the things. And for many of our gnat allergy horses, we manage these guys once a day with this for a while, then we're able to go down to every other day or so. So fantastic product. Um, most of the kinetic products are pretty readily available. Um, I just say, go to the Google and see where it sends you. Um, we, we do have a pharmacy. You can go to our website at springhillequine.com and it'll send you to them. But also, like I said, readily available in many, many, many locations as an over-the-counter option. We're going to go back to here one second because I realized I meant to swap out that Zyrtec for a product called Apoquel. And if you have had a dog that is allergic to fleas, Apoquel is commonly used in small animals for skin allergies. There is ongoing work from the manufacturer uh, and it is about to probably get an FDA approval for horses, but Apoquel can be an option. Now, if you've ever, if you've ever used Apoquel in your dog, you're going to be like, oh my gosh, there is no way I can afford that in my horse. The good news is for all the things horses do wrong, and we can go through a list of things that are wrong with the design of horses, their Apoquel dose is significantly lower than a dog. 
So while it is expensive to start, you start them very aggressively for about two weeks, then you start tapering the dose down until typically I have them on it twice a week. Here we'll go up to three times a week for the worst summer months, and then we can usually taper back down again. But Apoquel can be a great option for the horses that we can't get under control any other way. Now, these are the things that I get lots of owners ask me about. Can I get something for the fungus or for the mange? Or I need to deworm, or I did deworm them. You know, I've done all these things. So only if I have what looks like fungus on a skin scrape and potentially a culture, am I going to reach for an antifungal? And typically we reach for griziofol, griziofolvin. It's the hardest word on the planet for me to say. But these come with a lot of side effects. And so we are not going to reach for an antifungal powder quickly. We are going to make sure that we for sure feel a fungus is involved before we reach for it. And when we do, we're going to be treating for a long time long time. Usually we have to treat those horses for 30 days. And then we have to look at the environmental factors. If there are any blankets, saddle pads, girths, we're going to have to treat those for fungus as well because those spores get in there and they're nearly impossible to get out. If I do see pinworms, we are going to deworm. But notice here I have the product Pyrantel. Deworming, I can do a whole nother one of these on parasites and I'm happy to come back and do that because it's a bit of a passion for me, but do not just, just indiscriminately deworm your horse. That should be guided by fecal egg counts. However, if you see pinworms and you feel very confident in that diagnosis, you've taken a picture of your horse's butt and sent it to your veterinarian. I get them all the time. Don't worry about it. I'm fine with it. Then we want to deworm with pyrantel in particular. While this dewormer is not particularly effective against worms we actually worry about in horses, it is very effective against pinworms. And so I will give it once, and then I don't repeat it until I see that the horse is having a problem again. I will tell you that pinworms are in your environment, without a doubt. They're everywhere. Once you have a horse with pinworms, they're all over the place. The good news is that there seems to be a genetic propensity towards having it, for example, on my farm, I had uh, the mother of most of my horses. She was particularly susceptible to pinworms. So I could, like clockwork, count on her needing to get dewormed in June for pinworms. Funnily enough, none of her kids have the same propensity. So at least we've got that. They do all have a tendency to have high fecal egg counts. But again, that's a whole different talk we can go into. Uh, but Pyrantel works very well against pinworms. Ivermectin does not. They are incredibly resistant to ivermectin. So even if you have dewormed your horse recently based on a fecal egg count from your veterinarian, then you may need to do it again with pyrantel to handle pinworms. So let's talk about managing the, the bug allergy component of it, because that is a whole different beast, right? There's, there's a lot that needs to be done to do this. And I am fairly certain that if we had a microscope out, this is what we would see when we saw a gnat because those little suckers. Mm. Anyway, it is very similar to a flea allergy in a dog in that what horses are actually allergic to is the saliva. So when the gnat comes and, and touches the skin, it's the saliva from the gnat that, that gets it kicked up. And you guys are gonna have another one of these with the other Erica. I'm uh, Erica Latcher, she's Erica Mactinger, but she has uh, great information on managing flies. But I'm gonna give you the spoiler for gnats. We don't have an option for managing gnats in the environment. And the thing a gnat needs to be happy and have just the most wonderful environment to breed and make more gnats in is sandy soil with an organic component. So if you think about your farm and the fact that your horse poops on your farm, you have soil with an organic component and you probably have some sand. Now add some water to that and we all make a lovely gnat breeding ground and there is no kind of option to manage the gnats from an environmental standpoint. So we have to manage them from an avoidance standpoint for our horses. 
And that's where these guys come in. So out of Dr. Mactinger's lab, she actually did a study on fly sprays because I don't know about you guys, but I spray my horse with fly spray and I go, did I even do that? And it turns out for most of the fly sprays out there, no, doesn't matter. You can spray that horse and those flies, boop, right back. They're there for you. They didn't even care that you put a fly spray on. What they did find in that study was that EcoVet and the ingredients in Outsmart. So there's there's a couple similar ones, but Outsmart um, from Smart Pack, um, the one that comes from the Fly Predator people, the Spalding fly spray, and then um, there's one other that I can't think of at the moment, uh, and Equiderma's fly spray. Those three actually did a good job repelling flies. Now, EcoVet by far and away did the best. So if you're looking at repelling for as long as possible, as well as possible, go to EcoVet. I am going to warn you that it has um, quite the odor. <laughs> uh, it is actually an all natural product. It's entirely made of fatty acids, but it smells like bad teenage boy cologne when they're first learning what to do with cologne. It's horrendous, but it is an all natural product. So the way that I typically recommend applying it is that I spray it onto a towel or a sponge, and then I wipe it on the horse from there, as opposed to just spraying it in the air. Um, it gets me coughing, it gets my horse sneezing, but if I need to keep flies away, like if I'm at a horse show or something, this is my go-to product because it is amazing. It will even repel horse flies and deer flies for a short amount of time. Outsmart um, is one that I use on a daily basis on the trucks because I can't use EcoVet and then go work on that horse's leg as a veterinarian. The smell is just a bit strong. But these are two great options that you can use. And thinking outside the box with some of your fly sprays and not just applying them to your horse, but applying them to your horse's accessories like fly masks and fly sheets can be a great way to help repel. The other product we really like is Ultra Boss. It is a pour on fly spray mostly designed for cattle, but that same horse that I had that was really sensitive to pinworms was a thoroughbred mare who also had very sensitive skin. And so she was the first horse I tested Ultra Boss on and she did great with it. Over the years, I've only had one horse that strongly reacted to it. We had a feeling that horse would, he reacted to everything we put on him. But I usually recommend taking a small amount, trying it on, on a leg or something like that, seeing how the horse reacts before we use it. The way we use this product in particular on our gnat allergy horses is we will put a little crest of the mane, we'll put it on the top of the tail, under the belly, we put a bit in the ears. About using this product on fly sheets, fly masks, etc. It's oil based, so it's going to stick around. Um, and there are other options out there, like there's a Freedom Spot on some similar type products like that. The big difference I find with this one is that because it comes in this quart container, I can use only what I need and I can use small amounts more frequently so that I get more appropriate coverage for the horse and where they need it. Uh, it also works really well on ticks. We have a popular trail riding area here that is loaded with ticks. So I recommend that people put a small amount around all four legs, put a little bit in the tail, and put some under the chin when they go out to ride in that area. And it really, really, really minimizes the tick infestation we have to deal with afterwards. While Florida has a lot of things wrong with it, we are lucky in that we don't have the horse tick-borne diseases. But if you're in an area with that, you really want to work to minimize tick exposure. And that's one way to do it. And let's talk about that fly sheet. I am a nose-to-tail cover proponent. And Dr. Mactinger's research and some work from other labs has also shown that zebra print keeps them away. That's why zebras are zebra colored, is that this does actually appear to keep flies away from the horse. It seems to be a deterrent. They can't quite sight in. That's most appropriate when we're talking about horse flies and deer flies. Those types of um, kind of biting flies really come in and, and sight on the horse as opposed to like mosquitoes are looking for body heat and carbon carbon dioxide that you breathe out. So it doesn't, that is a barrier for them versus also being a sight kind of, it breaks them up so they can't be seen as well by those others. And I think on insect allergic horses, it is really important that you understand that 
they are covered over their entire body, if at all possible. And I realize we can't do all of them, but those are horses I will put in fly boots, fly mask, the neck, the belly wrap, you name it, they will have all of it on and any exposed skin will have typically EcoVet applied to them because it has actually been shown to repel gnats for 24 hours. These horses are a lot of maintenance, but if you put in the work, you can usually get their skin happy, but really, really, really important to understand that you need to have an effective barrier. Also, gnats don't like fans and horses do. So if I've got a horse that isn't, you know, maybe if, let's all face it, we have that horse that won't wear a fly mask, uh, you know, or they're super allergic and just any amount of gnat exposure or mosquito or, you know, whatever type of fly it is, they can't handle and it just sends them over that cliff into really itchy territory, putting them in front of a strong fan. So these big barrel fans or the fans, but not, not a little really dinky box. I don't like those anyways. They like to catch on fire in barns, but a for real fan that blows a lot of air at them in particular at dawn and dusk can really help reduce their exposure. Gnats and mosquitoes don't like to fly in the face of these fans. Many of our, our house and stable flies don't either. So it can be an easy way to keep your horse from having flying insects land on them. And then we can talk about diet. So for the horse that has a food allergy, we need to go to single source diets. That is incredibly difficult to do on horses, but we need to try to figure out one hay, one grain. Now I will unbalance their diet for a short period of time to see if I can get them to improve and then try to add things back. But for example, typically where I go is I try to go to oats and alfalfa, mostly because that's a relatively balanced diet for a horse. So we will go to there, keep that horse on that diet for 30 days, see how we do. If we have dramatic improvement, we will try to add back in an ingredient at a time until we can figure out, okay, this horse can tolerate, you know, this and this. Maybe the alfalfa isn't a problem, we can swap out to Timothy or Orchard or one of the grass hays from, from my area like Coastal, we can do something with the hay additionally. It is a long, tedious process if you have a horse that is truly food allergic. The advantage is most of the time they're allergic to alfalfa, so I will start there and eliminate that from their diet and try a different source of hay. If we're still not there, then like I said, I, I go to single source concentrate and like I go to a grain and then I go to a single source of hay and we start just adding things in slowly. I almost always bring in an equine nutritionist to help me. They're a great resource because not only can they help you keep that diet balanced, but they can also help you think about what options are out there for food and say like, okay, let's try this diet. For example, the Omega Match bag of, of ration balancer here from Purina has no soy in it. So it can be a good option for horses that we think may be soy allergic. Um, if nothing else, most other feeds have soy. So we can go to that and at least eliminate soy as an option. But I find in general, if I take these horses and I put them on high levels of omega fatty acids in some way, I can get things to calm down as well. We have really good research to show that omega fatty acids really take everything back from the edge of that itching cliff. And we have some great options. Flaxseed is the highest, well, it's the second highest commercially available in omega fatty acids. Um, I like the Triple Crown product only because it's easy to get. It comes in a big bag and it is stabilized. So flaxseed goes rancid very quickly if you're getting the raw product and then grinding it. You can do that, but you only wanna grind about a week at a time. That's not conducive to my lifestyle. <laughs> so when I add flax into a diet, I go ahead and get the triple crown flax. And like I said, it's been stabilized. So it has a shelf life of a year. It's stabilized by spraying calcium on it. It's not like they're spraying some crazy preservative or anything like that. It's just spraying calcium on it. So it's not like it's, it's not still a, a good product for your horse. The other place that I have recently been going more often is to the Omega Match products from Purina. And it's because they are very high 
in those omega fatty acids. And again, they're readily available um, to make life easy. You know, like I, I can't cook for myself, let alone for my horse. So going to these products can give us something off the shelf and easy to reach for that can help us. So the Omega Match oil is ahi flour. And this was work done by Purina to find a source of really high omega fatty acids that horses would eat. If you're a dog or a cat or a human, we go to fish oil, but horses uh, tend to say no to that. There are defished fish oils. I have no idea how you take the fish out of a fish oil, but anyway, there are defished fish oil products that are available. They are typically very expensive. And so that can be a bit of an issue in terms of long-term use on these horses. But the, the Omega Match oil has really helped me with some of these guys. Um, and the Omega Match diet has been fantastic. There have been a few that we did feel strongly had food allergies, but it was gonna be a difficult process to get them onto something commercially available. We went to this product and boom, there we go. Um, it is. It doesn't have soy, and it is a Timothy-based pellet, but it is a complete diet. So it has all the vitamins and minerals that they need to meet their needs. It also has all the protein, because uh, that's the big thing that we end up with, is that we don't have the right amino acids in there so that these horses can continue to make muscle and bone and all the things that they need to do. So considering these on any allergy horse, and particularly the oil or the flaxseed, can be a great way to help manage that, that skin just itchiness in general. So there you go. There's an exhaustive review of allergies in horses. Um, like I said, I am great with questions. So if you guys have questions, I'm happy to get them out of the chat. I'm happy to answer them. Um, I'm happy to do anything really. <laughs> Oh, that would be great. So please, there is, as Dr. Latcher said, there's no question that is too dumb, too ridiculous. Um, good Lord knows my vet has heard them all. <laughs> Hi, I, I have a question. Um, back to the sprays, the fly sprays that you mentioned, it was the Outsmart and that was, you could get that th through Smart Pack. Was that correct? And then the EcoVet is was that the stinky one? <laughs> it is. Yep. Oh. It is um yeah. And then Ultra Boss was ticks, correct? Ultra Boss does a great job for in particular where I use it typically is on pastured horses. Okay. Um, you know, that they may not work as much. Um but you want to give them good fly control for a long lasting, or if you're trail riding uh, somewhere and, and there's a lot of ticks, it works fantastic for that. Okay. Thank you. I, I will say that the smell of EcoVet is 100% worth it. If you want to keep flies away, there is nothing better than that stuff to keep flies away. And then, yes. okay. okay, flies. Then the Outsmart though, I got the impression you thought that was the best one. Um, I use that one more commonly. And the, the biggest reason is that as a veterinarian, if I'm at a farm and I want to use a fly spray, I honestly, I can't spray EcoVet on them and then get my face up by their leg and work on them. It's just, okay. it's too overpowering. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And I saw Diana had her hand raised. Yes. Can yes. you hear me? Yep. Can do. Okay, so um, I'm in Florida also, and I suspect my horse has nat allergies because last year it was really bad, treated it, treated it, managed it. Over the winter, it got so much better, and here, oh, within a couple of weeks, maybe a month ago, but definitely the last couple of weeks, I'm getting those crusty uh, ears again, like yep. the serum oozes out and the skin peels off and so um i'll go back to the products i used last year and what of course what you recommended um oh shoot i'm old and i forgot the actual question oh yes so i also have i have dandruff in my horse's mane so is that just like flaky skin from itching um yep. I, okay okay so if i resolve the itch 
via maybe those fly sprays that you recommended that will resolve the itch. Exactly. And then the dandruff will go away. Uh, okay. This is a huge place where I like the IBH salve in particular if the ears are affected. Um, uh -huh. Many of these horses I can get down to two or three times a week. We just get that salve in there and it calms the skin and repels the flies. This is uh -huh. also a great place to use um, like a fly mask with ears. And I'll put a little of the Ultra Boss product on the ears to help repel the gnats as well. Mm -hmm. it, it sticks around. It'll get a little nasty and you'll have to wash your fly mask periodically, but it does a great mm -hmm. job keeping and yeah. repelling the flies. Yeah, I'm going to, I've, I've, last year I tried it and, and I'm going to, and I tried it again yesterday, in fact, day before yesterday, the fly mask with the ears. I think it tickles and irritates his ears that he rubs them off. So, um, yeah. And that's I'll have where to the IBH, getting the ear to calm down, will allow okay. them to tolerate. Sometimes, you know, like when your skin is itchy and like you just, you can't even handle like clothes oh, sure. touching it. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. Um, and then the SA powder. All right. Um, hey, if I, if, if we're possibly suspect of, and, flax seed allergy is that typical or is that just you know hey it's some um i don't know is chia a good substitute for flax seed if you want to get those omega threes flax seed allergies are pretty rare like i would have to feel like i could really prove that you know like i'd taken the horse off all sources of flax for about 30 days i put them back on and i saw a change and they were allergic and for your horse in particular i would do that in the winter when their skin is quiet but if I was going to pick something to substitute in, I would honestly say that probably the Omega Match oil is a really good option or uh, um, chia seeds can be. But I think if you look at the economics on it, um, the Omega Match oil ends up being a little bit cheaper than chia seeds. I've had clients who've done the, the economics on it and found that they were, they were better off going with the, the Omega Match oil. Uh, okay. And what was the, what was the herb in the, um, Ecotonics SA powder or it's called quercetin. Quercetin. Okay. Q U E R C I T I N. Yeah. And is, is that is that something that people use for, like is it an anti-inflammatory that I think is also used for arthritis? Yes. Yep. Uh huh. Okay. That's the one. Cool. All right. I will tell you that I've had clients try to use straight quercetin, like the tablets. Yeah. And we have never had the same result with quercetin okay. that we As bought. The cocktail, like the cocktail in the essay. Yeah. Yeah. I don't and, know what, and the, what their magic sauce is, but it's magic. Right. Right. Well, and, and did the essay have flaxseed? Did it hyaluronic? Did, is hyaluronic acid effective for allergies too? Is it an anti-inflammatory or no? Oh, don't get me started on hyaluronic acid. But um, it has MSM in it, which is shown to be MSM, a bit MSM, that's what it has in it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Hyaluronic acid and is a whole other topic for me that I can always go into. <laughs> okay. Sounds like you don't like it or you like it. I don't know. I, I have a hard time saying let's feed a very large protein to a horse and put it in their stomach where it's then broken okay. down into the smaller component products and absorbed. <clears throat> if we just feed the smaller component <clears throat> products, which are a little bit cheaper, they'll make their own hyaluronic acid. Okay, cool. Um, okay, and I'm going to put you on the spot. If you had to choose between the SA powder and the Purina Omega Match, was it called? Yep, I'd pick the powder. Okay, thank you, ma'am. You're welcome. All right, and then it looks like Sheila has a question about uh, her horse who has gnat allergies. That's her only allergy, and it only seems to affect her ventral line belly. She exhibits no symptoms. I'm ordering anywhere else. She's ordering Equishield, SA, and IBH. You're going to love the IBH. You really are. I think it's going to get you where you want to do. But um, I would certainly try Zyrtec in this horse. My experience with Zyrtec is for, for really bad gnat allergy horses is that it, it often works, not 100% of the time, but it's cheap enough to try. And for the horses it works on, it works really, really well. So I would certainly give it a try. Um, and there, I don't think there is a belly cover product without the whole fly sheet, but if there was, I would check um, Schneider's 
<clears throat> which is um, sstack.com. Uh, if there's a fly sheet option available, they have it. I promise you. <clears throat> so you can check there. And then there's another one called um, Boet, B-O-E-T-T, that has some options available that uh, you can check out as well. <laughs> so, okay, we did have, and, and I have to just personally throw my endorsement with EcoVet, um, my personal horse is the one that was in the photo for this event in his um, little zebra stripe mini dress there because when you're an 18 hand draft horse, it's really hard to find zebra stripe fly sheets, but um, it, it did help and the EcoVet was amazing for him. So I, yeah, I find a, it to be absolutely unbelievable as a fly spray. I have to, I always warn people about the smell and, and it's hard to believe when you smell it that it's an all natural product, but it really is just fatty acids. That's all it is. Yeah, my, my barn manager called it the cloud of death. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I did, I did love your tip from the podcast to use, was it a sunless tan to apply? Yes. It? Yeah, a sunless yeah. tanning mitt. They, um, I didn't know this existed. Uh, I, I messed up my entire Amazon algorithm ordering something that was had to do with tanning, but um, they are a, they're they're sort of like a microfiber mitt, and then there's a foam underneath it, and they work really well to apply the fly spray to. They absorb a bit of it, but they don't kind of just soak it all up like a sponge, and then it's made to put you know sunless tanning products on evenly. So it does a really great job. Yeah, oh, that is a fantastic. Um, tip. And as I mentioned in my groups every year, when I get the EcoVet coupon that a gallon of EcoVet is cheaper than replacing the gate at your boarding barn. When your Percheron decides he's had enough of the bugs and puts himself away <coughs> in the barn under a fan. So it is interesting. Like on. you'll take these horses and if you give them access to someplace with a fan during the worst bug times, they will go underneath that fan on their own. A lot of them will, will kind of self-regulate if you give them those options. Absolutely. It was just, it was one, it was Memorial Day a couple of years ago and it just, the bugs exploded overnight. And my barn manager called and she's like, um, okay, so I hate to mention this, but, and when you have a draft, you're used to those calls. And I was like, not a problem. Then I called our local supply store and they, her husband picked up the gate on his way home from work. But, um, I will say that a gallon of EcoVet is cheaper than the gate. <laughs> so, uh, we did have one other question that was in our Facebook event chat. Unfortunately, the uh, poster was not able to join us this morning. She has a 24 year old off the track thoroughbred who was diagnosed last year with skin allergies to bugs, oats, flax, etc. cetera. Um, and the symptoms were extreme itching and hair loss. She doesn't mention what she was using to resolve it last year, but she's, and, and we will certainly share all the information about the Kinetic Vet products with her. Um, and that's what you would recommend to prevent this reaction this year? So my first question on this back, and I realize I can't get the answer at the moment, but would be how mm -hmm. is this diagnosed? Because very rarely do we come up with a flaxseed allergy through intradermal skin testing. So this was probably one of the blood draw skin tests that were performed. Um, and I know that's an assumption um, on my part, but that would be my guess. So well, again, if I nice think out. that they She's are allergic okay. to we flax, I will it. do a test during their best time of year where I say, okay, your skin looks fantastic right now. Let me add back in a little bit of flax and see if I get a reaction. <laughs> if I do, then I will say, okay, flax is much more likely as a cause of the problem. But that's typically the test I go to. If not, you know, like, and, and so managing it from there, typically where I go for these horses, the IR spray or and shampoo are fantastic. 
you know, like once a week or so we'll do a full body bath and you don't need a lot of the product. They're made for horses, right? So a little dabble, do you? Um, about mm -hmm. once a week, we'll wash them in that IR shampoo. And that really just gets the skin to just whew, calm down, go to your Zen place, make the world a, a happy place for you. And then we'll spot treat through the week with the IR spray. These are horses I also do have luck getting on either Zyrtec or SA powder or some combination. And that seems to help me get them through with, with that management scenario. Wonderful. And then Betty Jo, I think, had a question again. Yes. Yes. Um, you, you didn't mention much about um, possible allergy for a horse that has a breathing issue. Um, I just wondered if that is very common. My my horse recently had a very serious breathing issue, and when my vet came up, he administered the uh, steroid steroid injection, and that within minutes, you know, eased the the breathing. And he thought it was probably an allergy. Yeah, asthma horses are very similar you know they have all the same allergies um in terms of it, it that's what kicks it off um for most of them it is either a pollen or a mold so it's a little easier in the winter ones we don't so down here we have what we call summer pasture associated uh, asthma and it has to do with our pollen so it's much harder to get those horses out of that environment in the winter up north we have winter barn associated basically and it's the hay in the barn and the mold spores in the barn being closed up yeah. if your horse is experiencing it in the winter up north the the trick is can how much can you get them outside can you get them out there more often in the summer down south it's a little bit harder um but again we go to kind of our core management techniques for allergies we try these horses on the zyrtec we try them on the sa powder it is additive so over time they do get worse um, and for most of these, we end up managing them on some component of steroid uh, by mouth daily, unfortunately. Um, there are some other options out there, but we, those are, they're, you know, like we're using some amniotic slash stem cell -y type products on these horses as nebulized therapies. But for the most part, it's using steroids on a daily basis at as low a level as we can manage to keep them happy and then managing the environmental allergies the best we can. It's definitely a process. Yeah, it was just a, a one time event that I and he, he's a pastured horse. <clears throat> so I just I've never seen heard it before, ha, you know, had him go through that. So. That's more commonly going to be an exposure to something in the pasture, right? Like yeah. that you found, yeah. I would say mold would be my number one, especially being in a pasture. Potentially he found a, a bit of, you know, kind of pi a pile of, of uh, greens, you know, like grass mm -hmm. that had died or whatever, and that there was a mm -hmm. lot of mold in it. Um, and for whatever reason that set him off. If you think about if you've ever had that occasion where you walk into some place and all of a sudden like you're just leaking from everywhere and you can't breathe, he had yeah. that same scenario happen. Yeah. So as long as it's a one-time deal, then yeah, yeah, we manage it with steroids that one time and hopefully we never have to deal with it again. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Wonderful, okay, well, I think um we have just one more question for you and our uh, we're gonna put our sharing your screen on there hopefully it'll pop up shortly uh, but we do ask a fun question of all of our speakers what was your favorite horse book when you were a child black beauty wow there's no thought there. <laughs> I knew that Black one. Beauty, the same here. <laughs> I had, um, and I still have it. I have um, a really old edition of of Black Beauty that had, you know, like it has the the colored pictures in it that have like the the gauzy pages kind of in front of it to protect it. Oh, yeah, yeah. And so that was that was sort of my go to when I was a kid. Oh, it was how fantastic. fun. Yeah. Excellent. And I will just say one more thing, if, if I can. 
Um, oh, of course. The, the big thing that's important with allergies always, and in general with horses, is that this has to be a collaborative effort between you and your veterinarian. It's going to be really important that you have a great relationship with your veterinarian and you have the ability to talk to them on a regular basis about what's going on. That doesn't mean that you text me at two in the morning to tell me that your horse has a hive right now, but it may mean that you have an email chain with me where you give me kind of the daily synopsis of what happened and how your horse looks. But the more you can make this a collaborative environment, the better you're going to do managing your horse's allergies and getting the best therapies that are available for you. Wonderful. Okay. Well, we have a screen up with your contact information. I hope everybody can see it. Um, and you also have written a few books, but the one that we're super interested in is how to become an equine veterinarian. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Uh, well, my husband has written um, most of the books <laughs> about uh, <laughs> the adventures of marrying an equine veterinarian and what that has done to his life. So those are called the adventures of the horse doctor's husband. But in the process of writing those, we, we came to the realization that we get a lot of externs through the clinic. We get a lot of undergrads and we really wish that we could get information to them kind of sooner in their process. So we wrote a book about if you want to be an equine veterinarian, this is the steps you need to go through starting in high school. You, you could start these steps later, but starting in high school to set yourself up for success and have an idea on what the career is and how to get into vet school and be a successful veterinarian. Oh, how fun. So did I read correctly that you are on um, like the admissions committee for University of Florida, was it? I am. I'm on the admissions committee. Um, I... Many of you may know that there is a, a crisis in veterinary medicine, but in particular in equine medicine in recruiting and, and having equine veterinarians. It's extremely difficult to find them. Many of the students who go into school with the idea to be an equine veterinarian change their mind by the time they come out. So in, in my sort of motto of be part of the solution, not the problem, I said, well, I'm going to be on the admissions committee and we're going to look at you know, who is coming through here and are there some people that maybe that I recognize something in as an equine veterinarian that someone who isn't um, doesn't see. So, you know, that's that's my goal is to try to find those those hidden gems in there and get them through the process. Oh, that's wonderful. And I did have uh, jumping back to your presentation real quickly. I did have one question about the cost of the diagnostic testing. I don't think we touched on that. And um, I just wondered if you could speak a little bit to that all part so, of the course. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so the the physical exam, you know, I would say for for most areas, and it can, you know, it varies a bit depending on where you are, but for physical exam, skin scraping, you know, kind of the the easy stuff, you're not looking at a huge investment of funds, especially in the horse realm of things. <laughs> Uh, you know, typically for about $250 to $300 for us here in, in North Central Florida, we can get most of that baseline testing done along with a good physical exam. Now, if we do the, the work, you know, and we say, okay, this is a horse we have tried a lot of things on and they're not coming around and we want to do the intradermal testing in our area, that is, and it's, it's changed a little bit recently due to some changes in the availability of the, the drugs we use for it. But um, it, it ends up being about 600 for the testing. And then your first round of vaccines is about 200. So that is a little bit more of an outlay of dollars. Um, and it's definitely a time commitment. So that's the biggest thing I see people not understanding is that we, when, if we decide to go down that route, we have to be able to commit a year to 18 months before we decide if it's not working. But for most of this, it's actually seeing what you as an owner can do to manage them sort of daily in their environment. Okay. And I think Diana um, has a question too. Absolutely. Okay. Can you hear me? Okay. So Diana has, a, Diana has a statement to make. Thank oh. you. Thank you very, 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 very much for sharing your time and knowledge and experience so freely and so personably also. 
um, and, and on Facebook. I follow you on Facebook and learn on Facebook. And, um, you know, I am in Florida, but not within the reach of your clinic, your practice. So if I didn't love so much where I lived, I'd be moving within your practice because you are wonderful. Oh, and, thank you. And we need to... You're welcome. We need to clone about a million of you because, yes, a vet, uh, equine, large animal veterinary uh, uh, professionals are so scarce and difficult. And and is it because of the work or because of the cost in the education or um, I don't know. And then also, hey, so maybe like your work can reach out into like before they are requesting to attend UF, maybe into the elementary schools and the high schools to start getting younger kids thinking about it in their future. We're working mm. on it. I need more hours in okay. the day. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. Yeah. It, it was just a thought that crossed my mind, but you're, you're wonderful. And thank you for sharing your time. You're welcome. Okay. Thank you so much, Dr. Ledger. We are incredibly grateful that you joined us this morning. Um, and I feel like I had a follow-up question, but it will come back to me undoubtedly. So we will share um, the products that you mentioned in our Facebook event. We took a couple screenshots during this, so we will share those as well. For everyone who signed up, we did have originally Dr. Erica Mactinger from Penn State scheduled to join us. Unfortunately, she came down with bronchitis and lost her voice. So we will have her on um, another episode. And the, the three of us were chatting on email yesterday, and I don't know how we would have fit everything into this episode. <laughs> so I think the universe... Um, pretty much designed this. So we will have a full episode with Dr. Mactinger when she is feeling better later this year. And for those who are local in Northern Illinois to the Hoof Animal Humane Society, um, this weekend we have two Dine to Donate events today between four and eight at the Chipotle in Woodstock, Illinois. If you you show the flyer and, or give the code, um, we will get a portion of your order donated to Haas. And tomorrow, the Panera in Woodstock is partnering with us very generously to provide 20% of all sales donated back to Haas. So, both of those flyers can be found on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash hooved animals. And then next Sunday is our monthly open house and tax shop hours at the farm. So please join us from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. And then just a reminder that all of our Saturday Seminar Series episodes are recorded and may be found on our YouTube channel. You can search Hooved Animal Humane Society. Make sure you see our logo with the tree and the horse. Otherwise, on the screen is the exact ID. Please subscribe so you'll get a notification when our latest episode is posted. And as you can see, we have covered a wide variety of topics in the past. Please feel free to share those with anyone who might not have been able to join us. Um, a year ago, last May, we were talking with Dr. Sherry King about equine myths, sort of the old wives tales that persist and live on, even though our veterinarians try really hard to get us to get away from those. So please also follow us on Facebook, as I mentioned, so you'll get the latest posts on our events and what Ooh, all of our wonderful animals. I'm sorry, ma'am? Oops, you didn't mute me. <laughs> no, that's okay. Um, Thank you, Dr. Letcher. 
La lacquer is it lacquer or lecher? How do you say it? Oh. It's latcher. Latcher. Thank you. Latcher. So we thank everyone for joining us today. We hope you found this information useful. Um, and we look forward to having Dr. Latcher come back in the future. She and I were going over a long list of topics that we will have to see if we can schedule her to come back. Um, I did remember my question. The Kinetic Vet products, are those available through only our veterinarian or can we get those through Smart Pack or any of the other um, retailers? They are pretty darn widely available. Um, I've, okay. I've seen them in just about everywhere I've looked for them. So they're not exclusive yeah. to veterinarians. Wonderful. And before we let you go, um, would you mind touching on the new restrictions that will be going into effect in the next few weeks regarding over-the-counter antibiotics, if you have just a moment for that? Yeah, so starting, I believe it's June 11th, um, all of the over-the-counter antibiotics that are available through feed stores right now, you know, penicillin, oxytetracycline, some of those, will no longer be available. And this is a continued excellent, excellent kind of work in progress Campaign. by the the usda and the fda to try to take these antibiotics and put them back under veterinary stewardship where they can be used appropriately one of the biggest problems i see with over-the-counter medications is that penicillin for example i will get an owner call me and say i gave three cc's for a few days well that horse actually needed 35 cc's twice a day so we're creating resistance to antibiotics and we want to make sure that those drugs are available for our children and our grandchildren to use because we need them in order to continue to survive on the planet. So those drugs will be available through veterinarians and they will be available to you as prescription items as long as you have what we call a valid client patient relationship. And that me just means that you've seen a veterinarian in the last year. Uh, we've seen that animal and then we can facilitate that process for you. Wonderful, thank you. Jen? And Jen? Yes, ma'am. I have another question and it, it doesn't need a medical decree to answer it, but you had mentioned that uh, B-O-E-T-T -T brand of yes. uh, fly sheets and stuff. So of course I looked it up. And how, how do you, when you pick a size, it says full and riding horse. I call them. Or oh. actually, I emailed them. <laughs> okay. Oh, thank you so very much. You're welcome. Okay. That is it. Thank you, everyone, for joining us this month. Have a great rest of your weekend, and we will see you next month. Sounds Take good. care, everybody.